Yo, how's it going? Sorry. Yo, how's it going? Pretty good. How's everyone's weekend so far? I was thinking uh, we might do some like basic UV stuff to do. Yo, how's it going, Corvé? You picked up Mortal Shell? Sick. I think that's so awesome that Vitaly just decided he wanted to make a game and then just made a game. That's so cool. But like, not just like an indie game, like a proper game. <laughs> Let's look at this stuff. You're playing on stream labs? Are you going to start streaming? Four hour bus ride, an eight hour bus ride tomorrow? Jeez, that sounds intense. Yeah, it's pretty short, but it's it's still like, I watched a playthrough of it, it's still a decent amount. Especially for like 15 people making that game, it's pretty, pretty impressive. What should we do? I might do some organizing quickly. So, we'll put the kit under a new layer. I use these, um, I use layers quite a lot, because it makes it a lot easier to like, you know, turn stuff on and off. You gonna start streaming? Awesome. What are you gonna stream? Um, okay. So we don't need that. Kid. I might put the glass on the same layer. What uh? What made you decide to want to start streaming? What I like about like if you have like, if you put say for example the glass in a layer, and you, I don't know what the T stands for, but if you make it T, you can like see through the wireframe, but you can't select it, so you can kind of see where the glass is. But just keep, yeah. Or you can just set it to reference, which just means it stays there and you can select through it. But the T is kind of nice.
Yeah, so far we have like a pretty decent like first base. So I was thinking we should we could do some UV stuff. Or at least like a, a first pass of UVs. Yeah, I was thinking of actually learning um, Unreal. So I, I picked it up and I was going through the um, the tutorials on it. It seems pretty cool. The only thing I'm not sure about is stuff like um, like obviously you can't use Udems and stuff like that, so that seems kind of annoying. Just as far as like having to change the mindset of how I I model in UV, for example. Yo, how's it going? Yeah, we can do some we can do some UV stuff today. Mm. Yep. Yeah, as people know, obviously the stream is uh sponsored by Autodesk. Yo, how's it going? How am I doing? Pretty good. Pretty, pretty chill Saturday so far. <laughs> yeah, for people that are like can't usually like make the streams and stuff, we do all the streams uploaded onto YouTube. So you can follow my YouTube if uh, if you miss a stream. Yeah, maybe we should do some uh, temp UV stuff. All this stuff is pretty decent, I think. All main panels. Or at least in like a good position. I think last stream we kind of worked out the texel density we want. Uh, let's see. B. So we'll probably just deal with this one. Keep it keep it pretty efficient. Actually no, nah, maybe we'll go a bit bigger. Now that I'm looking at this for a, a separate time. Yo, Bulgari, well, how's it going, man? Yo, have you ever been... <laughs> Sorry, have you ever been in any of my streams before? That's so funny. All the Dragon Ball... F Some of the Dragon Ball Fighters people are, like, migrating over to check this stuff out. How do you decide what's a good textile density? Um, usually what I do, this is your first time. <laughs> yeah, welcome, man. But, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is what I do for a job. I, uh, I build spaceships for a living, for films. So this is one we're working on at the moment. 
This one isn't for a film though. I can't do my actual film work on stream, or I would be blacklisted and never work in the industry again. Yeah, that's so funny. I never, I never thought I would see like hook emotes in my own stream. Oh yeah, how do you de decide textile density? Um, usually, what I do is I take one of the biggest pieces. Like this is the biggest piece I know we have, and I'll see how that will fit on a Udem. So it's almost a whole Udem. So it's a pretty. Actually, let's just go full Udem. Actually, see what that is. This is usually like the safest bet. So once you have that, then you can simply just uh, go here to get uh, density. Let's just do 40, it's probably good enough. How many spaceships do you want to do before your career is over? I mean, I don't know. I feel like my career has only just started. We've, we've still got a long way to go. I've been in the industry for about seven to eight years now. An EU friendly stream, yeah, man. Every every Saturday we uh, we do the the EU friendly streams. So many more spaceships, maybe. I don't know. I since I own since I mostly like build spaceships, I'm kind of I want to like broaden my uh, skill set a bit more. All right, we know the bottom is identical. We can just steal the top. Yeah, well, Gara, usually we have like music and stuff like that, but this is a um. This is a series of streams sponsored by Autodesk, which is the company that makes the 3D packages we use in the film industry. So we have to keep it uh, pretty professional. So there's no music and stuff like that because we don't own the rights to any music. Singing? I mean, I don't know. Wait, didn't we say we're going to get First Crimson to sing for us or something? Autodesk Maya. Yeah, Yo, do you actually use any so like do you do 3D stuff at all? Uh let's flip this. Not even royalty free music? Uh I don't know. I think it's just best it's safest to keep it this way. Like say for example, like I'm doing my own concept just because we um we own the rights to the concept you're broke you were looking into octane octane is not cheap <laughs> octane is mad expensive especially for just a render engine A lot of royalty free stuff is not that good. Yeah, fair enough. But yeah, this is usually like the general way I use for figuring out text density. I'll usually just get my biggest piece, UV it, see how big it is, and then that's usually my, my base. Yeah, I use some. Um, I used automatic mapping just then. It actually gave us a pretty decent result. So I might just keep this. That's super simple. What renderer do I use, like at home? Um, I'm kind of playing around with a few things at the moment. Like I wanted to kind of learn um, Eevee, but usually I use Octane. Which one is the faster, better renderer, Octane, Redshift, or Renderman? Well, Octane and Redshift are GPU. I don't know if I don't think Render Man is GPU based. So fastest would be Octane or Render or Redshift. I mean, I'm not that a, I'm not an expert on render engines at all, though. But um, yeah, Octane and Redshift are pretty interchangeable. It's personal preference. I think Redshift is much cheaper though. 
You really miss the streams? Yeah, we've been doing a, uh, we do a EU friendly stream every weekend. Yeah, so we want, we want our, um, our tech, Texas. We want our UVs to all flow the same way. So, uh, obviously we'll just turn these around. Should you always keep the same GU that is the, both on the right and left side in the same UDIM? No. Alright, I'll show you I'll show you what we do with that sort of stuff. You We um you wanna always keep them in separate UDIMs. Wait, why'd I do that? Yeah, always separate UDIMs. And Yo, well, Gary, it's kind of funny, like, most of the streams I usually sit in are Dragon Ball Fighter streams. I, re I rarely sit in, like, art streams. <laughs> oh, sorry, we need to turn this stuff upside down. Uh, yeah, there isn't really that many, um... There's not really that many streamers in that do, I guess, what I do. Dragon Ball Fires can be addicting. Oh man, I I I love and hate that game so much. I find it hard to um to justify playing it. To be fair, I kind of have like a mentality of like I could just be working instead, <laughs> instead of just getting beaten up online. Not a lot of streamers do UV wrapping. Yeah, that's true. But um, we're doing important stuff. We're doing uh. Yeah, film industry stuff. I don't know, for some reason a lot of people really dislike UVs, but personally I, I don't really understand why the big hate. Like if you... I find UVs quite relaxing to be, <laughs> be honest. Because it's not, it's not that hard to do. It... For me it kind of feels like I'm like finishing the asset, if that makes sense. So it's kind of like, um, it gives me a bit of a, like a confidence boost. And it's also kind of like, um, oh shit, I didn't check that. It also breaks things up a bit. Like if you're stuck doing the same thing over and over, like if you're just modeling for like eight hours a day and you need a bit of a break, you know, just do some UVs. Like I actually do get tired of just doing UV, just doing modeling, I mean. Automatic. Less of a headache than designing? That's true. Yeah, like with UVs, you can usually kind of just switch your brain off. Well, for me at least. I I usually just, you know, switch my brain off, just do my thing. Oh, I should have done that. UVs are okay? Yeah, UVs are alright. Wow, it really doesn't want to keep that. Yo, how's it going? Oh, maybe we should do this. Uh, modify unitize. I use unitize UV method sometimes for doing paneling, like the edge of panels, I mean. You UV as you go. Um, I think UVing as you go is also not the best idea. You kind of want to be in a pretty good spot before you bother doing UVs. It just depends what level you're at. Like one of the benefits of like UVing, yeah, it's it's a it's a balance. Like say for example, this happens this happens quite a lot that um 
I don't know, texture artists might free up and need something to do. So you can give them like a first pass of UVs. Um, how do the squares like that? Is the Autodesk watching the stream? Yeah, they tune in. Um, saves a lot of pain later. I mean, all right, like a, a good general rule is like anytime you duplicate something, you UV it. Like that's, that's definitely the main thing I would do. This one's so long. Yeah, don't worry, I'll show you how to do the, um, the unitize method again. In a bit. Autodesk is always watching. <laughs> exactly. That's probably good enough. Yeah, so what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just unwrapping like my main group. So I've broken the thing up into separate groups. Based on like what they are. So for example, we have all this like basic paneling. I'm just moving this stuff out of the way. Oh, if people don't know, if you have like, um, where is it? This thing here. So this represents your, um, your numpad as well. Sorry, not your numpad, your, uh, your keys, your arrow keys. So you can just move them around with your keyboard. It's very convenient. If you leave it at one, but if you put it to like 0.1, it, it does the same thing. It moves 0.1. Oops. Could I explain UV density and resolution? Uh, I'm not smart enough for that sort of stuff. As long as it, I just get a a texture. I I just get a UV texture, scale it four times, and then see how that looks. If it looks fine to me, it looks good enough. That's when I I usually give it to the texture artists. They're the ones that look at it and be like, "Yeah, we need to change this or not." But I, I definitely don't know enough about explaining like actual proper textile density and stuff like that. That stuff is above me. Or well, it's just not something I really have to think about too much. Usually it's better to be like uh, safer and give them extra resolution. If a texture house needs to change UVs, do they send it back to modeling or change it themselves? Uh, that depends on the texture artist. Like the texture artist... Oh, actually no, I was going to say something, but that changes as well. I was going to say usually the modeler has to check it back in, but that's not true either. It depends on... It depends on your relationship with the texture artist. Like I, I get on really well with the texture artists I work with because I usually care about trying to give them good UVs. Oh yeah, I'll explain this, what this is. Alright, so what this thing is, this is Unitize UV. And what Unitize UV does is it takes every single face and makes it a full tile. So if you go here to modify Unitize, it pops it like that. And then what I'm doing is I'm grabbing my edges, which is all of the polys, deselecting the top, and then I'm going to pick where my seam is. So I'm going to do two seams so this thing is not too long. So those two. So you deselect where the seam is. And then you go shift right click, move and sew edges. And it pops, it sews all the edges together into like a grid, like that. And then when you have this, you just unfold in one direction. And that will kind of like spread it out, which is uh, very convenient. Um, when you UV kit bash, do you uniform, make them uniform or make it per piece? I usually just do it per piece because you have no idea what the scale of the piece is going to be later. Like say for example we have uh, like this drum thing here is also the same one as like this. So the scales are completely different. Like you have no idea how big your piece is going to be. So you just have to alter it when you use it. Well lots of questions, sorry. Um, Question, we always use the right hand section of UV grid, but what are the other sections used for? I have no idea. I got no idea what the negative numbers of the negative uh, space is for.
Yo, I'm gonna get some water. I'll be back in two seconds, actually. Um, do you think doing your own personal project will make you more sensible texturing? I mean, of course. If if I have to do texturing at home, I will look at use the idea of texturing. But I mean, usually I just work to a level that will be good for the texture artist. Like, I don't know. If texture artists are worker happy, I just assume I've done it right. All right, we didn't finish this piece. Yeah, so all I do at the start is pretty much set the same text with NC. Oh, this one's not the right one. Yeah, we're mixing up... Uh... So yeah, we're doing some UVs today, just to keep it at least... Because if I just did all like modeling the whole time, and then we did like the last like two, three streams with just uh, UVs, it might bore people. So we're, we're spreading the UVing out as we go. But it's also because we just have limited time to do this. Well, that didn't look good. I usually just unf like unfold in one direction just to have more control over it as well. Well, we need to cut that one. There are no accidents. What are you talking about? Um, do you think with a lot of pieces, do you eventually get tired of seeing certain shape or pattern? Um, maybe. Like I. I am getting, I do want to start doing like other stuff aside from spaceships because I just only do spaceships. Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot. We have, uh, we have notifications turned off because of this video is going on YouTube. But um, Art by Chance, Akibaru, and Rajan, thanks for the follow everyone. Yo, Chernobyl, how's it going man? Yeah, there, another reason why we're doing UV today is someone kind of wanted some uh, help with UV layout, so I'm just showing what I do. Now let's see. It's funny. I didn't realize my EU. Whoops. My EU audience was that bigger than my uh, US audience. I I get most viewers at this time. 
Oh, I thought Crimson was here for a second, but it was actually <laughs> just Crimson's face in the chat. Wait, why do I have the back face of this one? Don't need that. You a big fan of me? Awesome. Welcome to the uh, stream. I'm your hero. I don't. I don't know if I'd go that far. I'm just. I'm just another modeler in the film industry. But thank you. Wait, what's this piece for? Oh. So yeah, this is usually what I do. I usually just like quickly UV everything and get it to like kind of a decent state and then I'll organize it later. What was my last project? Uh, Dune. Crimson is here in spirit. <laughs> uh, Crimson. Oh, there's a gap here. All right, maybe it makes sense to have that then. <laughs> oh my god, the Crimson Emirates. <laughs> so funny. Oh, it was Dune. Uh, let's see. Doom. Oh, do that that Doom movie was awful. <laughs> God. I I would love for them to do like a proper Doom movie. Uh, straight new V's. Magic. I don't know, every time they try and do video game movies, it never really works. So um it would be nice if they did make it work. <laughs> Does working on a film change ruin your experience when you watch the film? A oh, thousand percent it does. For me, a lot of the time when I watch a movie, I usually just think of all the shots that got cut. That's, that's usually my experience when I watch a film I worked on. I'm like, oh, this is where the part I meant to see my spaceship, but it's not here anymore. Stuff like that. Whoa, this corner's broken. Yeah, I think it's definitely it's definitely true. Like working on a film will definitely alter your experience of it. Especially if you don't have a good experience. I mean if you do have obviously a good experience you'll be I don't know. Like I you do feel a, a level of pride, but you're still completely aware of what happened, if that makes sense. Where am I from? I'm from Australia. Yeah, I'm from Australia, but I uh, live in Canada at the moment. Because that's where the film industry is right now. Jeez. Are most studios in Canada? Um, I don't know. Some studios are leaving Canada. Like, uh, MPC left recently. Uh, COVID has made things interesting. Uh, no one really knows what's happening with COVID. Like, the future of the industry, I mean. Yeah, as you all notice, like, all of the paneling is flowing in the same direction and it's the same scale. This is, like, the most important thing you do for a texture artist. Because, like, a lot of stuff is, like, procedurally textured. So, if it, things are completely different scales, it makes procedurally texturing a pain for everyone. So it's always best just to keep everything consistent. I usually don't like mixing scales on an asset. It just, yeah, it just makes your life harder. I wonder if this is going to work. Oh. 
We can probably leave it like that, to be fair. Yeah, so in the end, we'll have, like, a bunch of panels like this. Oh, that doesn't look good. After you separate the sides, what do you press on flat pieces for, like, straightening? Wait, what? What do you mean by that? Do I have a college degree? Um, I have an advanced diploma in graphic design, which doesn't actually contribute to my job at all. But it helps me get visas. That's the only thing. I, that's the only reason I care about my uh, my degree. It's not really a degree. It, it's more like a. Isn't Vancouver super expensive? It is super expensive. Do you live from paycheck to paycheck? Uh, I don't. I'm I'm pretty well off in the industry. I mean, I I do some of the best. Oh no, that sounds kind of bad. I do some of the highest end VFX work in the industry. I I better not live paycheck to paycheck. <laughs> but I also do a lot of side stuff as well, like you know the Autodesk streams, like the uh, like I have my own kit bash libraries I sell on the side. I think with that sort of stuff, it's really good to do that sort of thing. Because you never know when you're going to lose your job in this industry. Like, that's just a simple fact. Like, projects come and go. So having a, a degree of stability is also a good thing. Oh, we could probably stick this onto here. But, uh, yeah, there's no real... Th like, this industry isn't really stable. So doing this, like, doing your own side business stuff. Like, when I say that, I mean, don't work for another company behind their back. That's bad. But, like, unrelated stuff, like, you know, Patreon, like, teaching, stuff like that, like, that gives you a level of control in an industry that's incredibly unstable. <laughs> Is it hard to get visas to self taught artist? Uh, depends entirely on the country you're going to and the country you come from. Yeah, so that's... That's one of the reasons why I did so much extra work on the side. You know, I set up the Twitch thing. I had, well, I had a Patreon to do it anymore. Is to give me a, a degree of stability. Like, even if I lose my job, I'll just stream on Twitch for a bit to keep me afloat. Like, that sort of thing. How do you set your UV layer UV tile to not fill up the whole space? What do you mean? Uh, where did you start in 3D World, and how did you end up working professionally? I mean, I can tell you my story of how I got into the VFX industry. That was a pretty cool story. Um, so, yeah, for people who, ha who haven't heard my my story before, I uh, I'm a self-taught artist, pretty much. Like, I studied graphic design back in Australia, but I didn't I didn't do graphic design. Like, I got introduced into 3D during that, and then I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. But obviously I didn't know how to do like this, like I didn't know anything about topology or anything like that. So um, I took a year off and self-taught myself like proper workflows. And then I made a portfolio. I sent it, I looked online and found literally every single studio on the planet. And I sent my portfolio to about 90 studios. And I heard back from none of them. <laughs> I know, right? So I heard back from none of them. I redid my entire portfolio in three months. Like, I was working crazy hard. And then I sent to 130 this time, and I heard back from none of them again. <laughs> so I said, fuck it. So I, um, I booked a flight to London with an exact one-year uh, return flight. So I, had, I was forcing myself to stay in London for one year to try and make it work. Like, my original plan was to... Um, you know, work at a bar or something. Like, I just wanted to be in the area. Give me the highest chance of being hired. So I, my plan was I would go work at a bar or something like that and just keep hassling studios until I got a job. But fortunately enough, when I, when I first got there, I caught up with some other Australian guy. I told him, you know, I just rocked up. 
And then he invited a friend to have dinner with us. Like, it wasn't a planned thing. It was just like, oh, my friend is close by. I wish to grab dinner. She happened to work in HR at MPC. And I told her I literally just arrived from London. I arrived in London with nothing. Like, I, I had no job, no accommodation. I'd never lived out of home before. I just kind of appeared in London. And then um, I told her my story. She was like, oh, would you work as a runner? I was like, hell yeah. So I gave her my contact information. And then the next day, I sat across the road from MPC in a coffee shop, <laughs> just refreshing my iPad for hours until I got an email from them. <laughs> and they were like, they were wondering when I was free for a chat. And I was like, I'm across the road right now. Do you want to talk now? And they were like, uh, okay. So yeah. I ended up walking in, in my first week of being in London, I got a job as a runner at NPC. So, um, a runner like cleans kitchens and, uh, yeah, what they do, they clean kitchens, they serve clients coffee, they do all the running around at the studios pretty much. And then, all right, but I don't want to be a runner though, I want to be a modeler. So as soon as I got in, I walked straight to the modeling department and I was like, hey, <laughs> this is my portfolio. Can I, uh, can I get hired one day? And they were like, yeah, your work is all right, but we can't hire you because we don't, we outsource all our junior level work. And I was like, oh, okay. So then for the next three months, I would um, do my running shift, then sit at a spare desk in my free time. So I, I also had a rule that I had to be the last person in the room every single night. So, I mean, this is, this is you know, NPC and, you know, pretty intense work environment. So I'd be at the studio like 15, 16 hours a day pretty much. Of my own choice, of course. And then after three months of doing that, they said, okay, fine, we'll give you a shot. And then Phil's first film was Guardians of the Galaxy. And uh, there we go, that's how I got in. I pretty much just forced my way in. What is this? Oh yo, Hugo, how's it going, man? Do I advise people to do the same? I don't know. It depends how, depends how badly you want it. <laughs> like, I had the mentality of, like, I'm going to break into the industry, regardless of whatever happens. And then it worked. So I got in. Do I advise other people to do the same? Uh, it depends entirely on you as a person. Do I have work from that portfolio? Yeah, I can show you my original portfolio. Um, it's it's terrible. Like it's it wouldn't get me a job today. How do I? Yeah, it's so funny, right? Like back then, it felt impossible to work in the industry. Like it felt like it was just, it just never was going to happen for me. But um, then I ended up working on three Star Wars movies. So that definitely, <laughs> my life didn't go the way I thought it would. Yeah, we can look at my terrible demo roll. So the full story is here in detail. This is <laughs> fucking snail. Like, don't don't use this as a benchmark for quality. This is garbage. Like, my portfolio, like now, wouldn't. Like, my portfolio wouldn't get you a job now. I don't think. Like, the models are fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just boring. So I just built my room in 3D. Like, this is one of the ways I learned Maya, was I built an object around me a day for a month. So I just built whatever I saw around me. Eh, gun's kind of cool. Everyone, everyone builds a gun. I did a snail because I assumed I needed to have something organic, so I picked the most simple organic thing I could find. And now the snail is a massive meme on my channel. <laughs> Fucking snail. There's definitely a lot of things I would change. I mean, this is before I had any industry experience. So, um... Battleship's kind of cool. The snail, I know, right? The snail. The snail is what started it all. <laughs> Fucking snail. I never thought something I did as a student, like, eight or nine years later, would haunt me. <laughs> but, uh, Twitch chat found a way of doing it. So yeah, like, that's the thing, like, there's no real, like, 
a set path into the industry. You just need to find your way in. Just be very, um, what's the word? Yeah, very determined. You're still looking for a house, man? Jeez. That's so funny, right? People, people don't know me for my many... People don't know me from like many spaceships on Star Wars and Transformers and stuff. They know me because of that bloody snail. <laughs> uh, goddamn. Alright, as long as chat is happy. Alright, so we don't see the bottom of this one, so we probably don't need the bottom. How do you lay out UAVs using the same textile density? Um, what do you mean by how do I lay them out? I just keep everything in the same textile density uh, to be consistent. So we, like this is one of the things I talk about when it comes to refining. Like we, we know we're not going to see the bottom of this panel. So that's a whole massive like area of UV space we can just get rid of. Like we don't, we don't need this at all. Oops, hang on. Yo, I need to go to the restroom. I'll be back in two secs. Make sure you get up and like stretch your legs and stuff. How am I doing? Pretty good. Still, still working away. Have I ever thought about making my own short? Um, nope. I, I am definitely not a filmmaker in the slightest. I would be much more likely to make my own game than a short. Like that's the funny thing, right? I don't actually watch movies that much. For someone that works in the film industry, I don't really watch movies. At all. Uh, let's try this one. Make my own game? Uh, we'll, we'll see. I'm learning Unreal Engine at the moment. So maybe. Maybe one day that would be kind of fun. I don't know, I see like Crimson making his own game. And I'm like, oh, that looks so fun, I want to do that. But then Crimson just runs around his own level. <laughs> Not being productive. So I don't know if we should fall into that trap. Why would you watch when you can make? I removed some end gun options. Yeah, while we're doing the Autodesk stream, we'll, um... Yeah, for people who haven't been here before, Usually you can spend your channel points to make me do like handstands and headstands. 
<laughs> because I'm a, uh, I've been a break dancer for the last like 13 years. But um, yeah, we're trying to keep the stream a bit more professional. So you can still earn the channel points, of course. But um, we can you can do all the handstands and stuff after. Maya has taken over. Yeah, we have to we have to be professional for the auditor streams. I don't think people will watch this to see me do handstands. Okay, we see that one. Yeah, one of the cool things is if if you spend the effort to try and do like a good model, it'll give you nice automatic UVs. So this is usually what I do. I I try the automatic first just to see what it looks like, and if it gives me a good enough job, I'll just leave it. Like that's this is fine. Yeah, I think for me, Guidance of the Galaxy will always be my favorite project I worked on. Just because it was my first project. And, um, yeah, the spaceships are cool. Like, that film definitely set my, um, that, f that one film set my whole career up. So if I didn't work on that film, I would probably be in a pretty different position now, I think. Because it definitely, it even influenced, like, my favorite sort of a uh, like spaceship aesthetic, I guess. It's so funny. I I never thought I would see Hook Gang God emotes in my own <laughs> in my own stream. That's kind of funny. His uh his emotes are so sick. Yeah, Hook is a um a professional. Dragon Ball Fighters streamer, I must stream a player, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how fighting game players usually refer themselves as professionals or not. They earn money, so technically they're professional. What is my least favorite work you needed to do? I mean, usually cleaning up other people's models is usually one of the worst things you have to do. <laughs> or doing, like, yeah, I don't know. It depends. Every film has bad work on it. Not as in like it looks bad, but it's just boring or technical or stuff like that. Yeah, it's probably fine. And what was it about? You didn't finish Ghost of Tsushima? Yeah, that game is amazing, man. That's that's for sure one of my favorite games. Yeah, everyone, I know this... <laughs> watching me do UVs is probably not the funnest thing in the world. But um, it's obviously very important. Like, because if you give shit UVs to a texture artist, they'll hate you. So it's it's good to make sure you do uh, good UVs. Like you, uh, what am I saying? Like the texture artists do remember people that give them terrible UVs. And you want people to uh, like you in this industry. Because that's how you survive. You work on movies exclusively, or do you ever done three D website applications? Um, yeah, I like as far as like my actual job goes. Yeah, it was just film. I don't know. Like, I guess this is technically a job in a way. This isn't movie stuff, but yeah, pretty much just film. Wait, why is that like that? And you do. Do the UVs of all assets in a film, for example, have different ships need to be the same or only for one asset? What? Do the UVs of all assets in a film between different ships need to have the same... I mean, you can't have the same UVs across multiple ships, so that doesn't work that way at all. Oh, density. No, no, it depends entirely on the asset itself. Like, for example, like this ship we might see close up. But then other ships will be further away. So there's no need to have 
if you're doing like a city, it makes sense for the city to have the same density because it's all going to be procedurally textured with the same textures. But as far as like ships go, nah, it's, it's based entirely on the, the context of the uh, asset design for modify. Um, Yeah, we focus on doing film assets. I don't, I don't know anything about games or game workflows, so I'm not the person to ask about that. I would just be guessing. Yeah, it sucks. I'm listening to the Persona Five OST. So good. Unfortunately, we can't have it on stream. We can't have it on stream. But uh, yeah, such a good soundtrack. Game workflow is a lot more optimized. Um, I don't know if I'd use the word optimized, but it's just more um, like we we prioritize organization and ease of texturing over, like for example, using UDIM space. Like I know, like a lot of game artists don't like that we don't ugh. we don't use all the space, but we. Well, oh, that's a strange result. Uh, let's just do camera based. Yeah, Hugo, take it easy, man. If you guys don't know a Hugo's desk, you should definitely check his uh his Twitch and YouTube out. Um, once you have a house, you'll be back to Switch. Yeah, man. Yeah, if you guys don't know uh, Hugo's desk, definitely go check his uh his Twitch out. Can you uh shout him out, uh, Chernobyl? Yo, Hugo with the five gifted. Yo, thanks so much, man. I appreciate it. You didn't have to do that, man. Yo, thanks so much for the five gifted, man. I appreciate it. I hope you uh you have a good weekend, man. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, once we, um, I don't know if we'll do, how much UVing we'll do today. We'll do, like, a, we'll get it to a decent level. I just want to show an example of how to lay UVs out for someone. Is Nuke more for special effects? Nuke is a compositing tool. So, Nuke you only use for compositing. Well, Hugo... I don't know if Hugo is still here, but Hugo uses uh, Nuke. So he, fo he focuses pretty much exclusively on Nuke. Oh, texturing? That's true. I know a texture artist that's textured it. I mean, I do use Nuke at work to compile my daily, but that's about it. <laughs> that's the only thing I, I ever use Nuke for, is to put together my daily. And even with that, studios usually have a template which does it for you. So you just import your renders and <laughs> then you're done. Oh, oh. Wait, why is it? Oh. Favorite project? Uh, Probably Guardians for sure. I think, but for me, I feel I'm kind of looking at Guardians with like rose tinted glasses. Just because it was my first film. Like, the things that annoy me now didn't annoy me then. <laughs> to put it that way. 
Like, because I just didn't know any better. Like, that's just how... Like, if the director wants to redo my months of work, back then I didn't care because I was excited to work, be working on movies. <laughs> Where now I'd be pretty pissed off. So I think it is like rose tinted glasses sort of thing. But it is also a good film. And um, I, I enjoyed working on it for sure. My team was really good. MPC London, the team I, that used to be there, is easily the, the best team I think I've ever worked with. Yeah, I feel like this stream is more going to be a Q&A while people watch me do UFs. Fortunately, all the uh, all the kit bash stuff we have is uh, it's already UV'd, so um, we don't need to worry about doing this stuff. This is the most important thing about like UVing your stuff before you kit bash with it, because well, I mean this one's not done. It, it saves you so much time. The panels are the main stuff that we need to like manually do. We can probably combine all this stuff together. Um, L engine Tito. Yo, good evening. You're learning UVs while modeling for your first model for a game? That's awesome. What about Unreal or Unity? What are you guys talking about? Yeah, Unreal is free. I think that's awesome. Like, I think Unreal's uh, business model is really cool. You pretty much just... It's free until you make like a million dollars or something. <laughs> so, it's going to be free for most people. Yeah, indefinitely. Alright, let's uh... Um, so if you have a slow day and there isn't much change in your daily render, you'll get hit by the supervisor? What do you mean? I mean, there are slow days. Like, if your task... I mean, there's like there's days where, say, for example, you'd be working on an asset, and then it just goes back to concept or something. And then you just have to stop working on your asset, and they'll just find you something else to do temporarily. Like, that sort of stuff happens a lot. That's a, that's a pretty normal thing. Or say for example, I mean it happens with all disciplines. Like say for example, rigging is waiting for you to finish a model and then that changes. Like you're, uh, what am I saying? Like the schedule constantly changes at work. Like in, in all studios, it's not, yeah. Well, we're going to do that. Why is everything so expensive? Do you mean like CG related? Yeah, everything is expensive. <laughs> but to be fair, it's not too bad. It could be worse. Yeah, there there is that program. <laughs> but even then, that program isn't free either because everything that makes that program good are paid for add-ons. <laughs> so that, that argument of it being free isn't true either. Say its name, Blender. <laughs> it's alright. Uh, let's see. Cool, that's good. I usually like to make things like at the moment these are turned over, so I want to have things like like this. No, that's upside down. I usually like to have things like consistent.
What do I think of Cinema 4D, good or bad? Cinema 4D is actually what I started in back in the day. Like that was the program that we were taught at um, when I studied graphic design. So I think Cinema 4D is a cool program. It will always have a, a spot for me because it was the first program I ever used. But um, that's the thing, right? So like even though I started with Cinema 4D, I knew Maya was the industry standard for modeling for a film. So I learned Maya. That that's pretty much it. There's no there's nothing else to really say about that. You gotta you gotta learn the industry standards. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah, like, I think, like, as far as getting into CG, like, use, using any program is fine. Like, if you, if you use Blender to get in, not into the industry, but if you use Blender to get into 3D in general, I mean, that's totally cool. It's, it's fair enough. It's a free program. But it's, you have to learn Maya if you actually want to get a job. That's the thing. That, that's the reality that a lot of people can't seem to, to grasp. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you want a job. Which, in theory, is the whole reason you're learning these programs. You need to, uh, you need to learn Maya. The automatic was pretty good, actually. To an extent. Oh. Really, what is that? Wings 3D. <laughs> I don't know why Wings 3D always pops up. That's so funny. You lost a few job opportunities recently due to not knowing Maya? Ah, oh, that sucks, man. It depends entirely on the type of work you want to do as well, of course. Oops, that doesn't look good. The Persona 5 OST is good. Wait, you guys can't hear it, right? Alright, good. Because, yeah, we can't have it on the stream. Yeah, the Persona 5 OST is amazing. That's, that's what I'm listening to right now. <laughs> Unfortunately, the rest of the chat can't listen to it. Because uh, we don't own the rights to Persona 5. Yeah, we can probably get away with that one. Am I a Canucks fan? Nope, not in the slightest. <laughs> I couldn't... I couldn't care less about ice hockey. <laughs> I've seen one game once, and I was like, this is kind of underwhelming. <laughs> so, uh, sorry to all the Canadians out there. But I think Australian football is crap as well, so it's not like... <laughs> not like I'm being biased or anything. But I think Australian football is a terrible sport. What are these? Oh, they're the outsides. Who do I look up into the in in the industry? Um, a lot of the I guess a lot of the people I usually look up to are more like the concept guys. Like you have, and it's not a, it's not even necessarily for their work. It's more their work ethic that I I find quite inspiring. Like dudes like Vitaly and stuff, just because they're on like a constant grind. Constantly pushing things, you know. I find that sort of stuff super inspiring. So I guess if I look up to anyone, it's more like that group of people. I don't think there's anything in like my industry I in particular look up to. I don't know, the word looking up to sounds kind of strange to me. Canada is number one in the viewers, really? Oh, I must have offended a lot of people then.
do I know anything about 3D modeling in the oil and gas industry? I have no idea. <laughs> I guess it depends what you're talking about. All right, have we done all the left panels? Oh, main panels. Almost. What's left? What is this one? Oh, okay, fair enough then. Ugh. Like, I did a bit of architectural visualization before. That wasn't fun. I, uh, I freelanced a bit back in Australia. Every single client I tried to work with tried to screw me at some point. That was fun. Yeah, the joys of freelance. Um, I asked this a couple of times, but chat is moving kind of fast. How do you lay out UVs without them filling up the whole area? I don't know what you mean. Are you talking about... In the layout UV settings, I have the scale turned off. Is this what you're talking about? Um, I can't remember where it is. Somewhere in here, I have, I have it turned off. So it doesn't... It doesn't scale them. Uh, shell pre-scaling? Is that it? Okay, yeah, that's what I have turned off. Uh, let's new reason. Actually, to be fair, we won't see the other side, so we can probably get rid of that one. Like, this is what I'm talking about when it comes to, like, optimizing stuff. Like, just simply get rid of things you won't see. And you don't, you know you don't need. And then it just makes our UVs much smaller. Do you know how long it takes for an artist to get their speed back? What are you guys talking about? Yeah, I think like that, like we, I was literally thinking of writing a, a blog about this because we, we have this debate every single time I ever stream ever <laughs> about that program not being industry standard. But yeah, one of the main things is your whole workforce consistently, they all know Maya. So it makes it much easier just to hire people that know Maya. <laughs> yeah. So we, all the main panels are done now. Cool. All right, let's let's do some organizing. Put all the bottom stuff together. So, what is over here? I might just, well, I might just auto pack based on the chunks. That might be the way to go. In saying that, I do want to have the things running consistently, though. Wait, where's this one? Oh, it's over here. Um, so you say it's easier to hire my artist users than firing all other employees. So <laughs> I know, right? Big, big surprise there. It's it's easy to hire the industry standard. Because that's the thing, like, so when you start at a new studio, regardless, you have to do um, training to learn their pipeline. So can you imagine having to learn a new pipeline and learn a new program? Like, <laughs> it'd be a nightmare. Alright, auto packing is pretty good, actually. We'll just leave this. This is probably enough. So as you can see, like, I'm doing it based on, I'm doing it based on where they are. I mean, if you, if you, I used to do it this way. I don't do it this much so anymore. Where I would actually manually, like, rebuild it. <laughs> so I would have, like, this panel, like, underneath this one. So once upon a time, I used to do this. 
So you, it actually flew into each other. But now I don't bother. I don't. I don't think it's worth the effort of doing that. Really, that's a lot of effort, especially on with, especially with such a limited time. I mean, if you're the one texturing and you want to do that, like totally makes sense to do that. But we have such a limited time to do this one, so I'm just gonna auto pack. Life as a 3D artist seems rough. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I I live a pretty comfortable life. It's it has its pros and cons for sure. I think the biggest thing that people have to deal with and accept is the fact that they'll probably have to pick up their life and move it <laughs> to get a job. That can be kind of brutal. But as far as like the work goes, I'm like I never I never wake up like this is this is a pretty big thing for me, I feel. Like I never wake up and like hate the idea of going to work. Like even if work isn't going too good, I still get to go and build some spaceships. Like that's the sort of thing. Like I don't feel like I have any right to complain about my uh, my work conditions if that makes sense. But then then again I'm uncomfortable. I'm I feel fairly compensated. I'm I feel I'm respected at work like all that sort of stuff. I don't know. Meanwhile that you have people that work in the uh like the the service industry dealing with idiots. So, I'm happy that I don't have to deal with with idiots. Um Mario goes crazy slow when you have this size of a mesh and UV tiles. I don't know about that. I mean, I've I've worked on like 300 Udum assets and people textured it okay. So, I'm not sure about that. Oh, I didn't do the bottom. Actually, it's cool. We don't have to worry about that. I didn't do this one, though. Um... Is it normal to take a long time to figure out proportions of a 2D concept? Um, it takes as long as it takes. Like, there's no, there's no real answer for that one. Like, some, some things are harder than others. That's just simply how it is. There's no... Uh, like, this is the thing. Like, a lot of the questions people ask, they're usually pretty subjective. There's no real, like, answer. Like, direct answer I can just give you, which will solve all your problems. Three hundred Udems. Yeah, I've seen. Um, I think Pacific Rim had like a thousand Udems. I think that's too much. I've never seen a thousand Udems on an asset before. But yeah, I've worked on like three hundred Udem assets before. It's not too bad. Like usually, well, for me at least, usually when it comes to things that can be quite daunting like that, you usually just break it down into small sections, which is like what I'm doing now. Like I'm just doing the UVs, for example, based on the uh, the materials. So that's the main thing we're doing at the moment. We're just UVing based on material. So I'm gonna grab all this stuff. So even though I'm automatic unwrapping, I'm st not unwrapping. Even though I'm automatic uh, doing automatic layout, I'm still kind of doing it based on based on where they are. If that makes sense. So I'll, I'll automatic. I'll auto pack these things together just to keep it like slightly more organized you thought it was overkill when making 20 uh depends what depends what um texture size you're using as well like when i say like 250 that was like 254k but if you did it 8k you can obviously have less udems it just depends what you're doing um, is it better to place everything together in a Udom? Uh, yeah. Like, you wouldn't want, like, say this piece, you wouldn't want this on a separate Udom. Well, you definitely wouldn't want that. But you wouldn't want it on two separate Udoms like that. At least keep the pieces consistent in the same Udom. Yeah, so... 
since I know the bottom is symmetrical, I'm probably going to do this. I'm going to keep it like that. I'm going to group this, actually. So, I have uh, this thing here. So, I'm going to put that there. Duplicate, go down. Negative Y. And then I'm going to freeze it. So, that's going to turn this red. Red is okay for us. Like, it doesn't matter for us if some are red and some are blue. But I'll probably do it like this. Like, you'll notice I have two, a gap. So, it means, like, if I ever work on this one, I can just duplicate it down and move it across. And it also means the texture artist knows anything they do on the top, they can just they can just move it across and have for free. So if I ever modify something like this, I would either delete one and move it, or I would just move them together at the same time, like I just do this, as long as they stay consistent. Stuff like that. How do you manage to use the red UVs? Mm -hmm. Just texture artists say, yeah, leave it red, it's fine. Are you then painting across them or one unit at a time? Um, I don't know, I'm not a texture artist. <laughs> I'm nice to texture artists? Yeah, hell yeah, I, I'm super nice to texture artists. Alright, so all of my... Wait, where is it? Oh, I deleted my... When did I delete them? Um... Hmm, okay, whatever. Oh, no, I deleted the wrong one. That's why. I'm confused. Oh, no. Okay, this is what needs to be deleted. All right, now we're chilling. Cool. So now we have a lot of panels like UV'd, like just the left side, by the way, not the not the center, just the left side. Cool. So this is the way I usually do my UVs, like this. So we're gonna go based on. Um, so usually I do like left, right, left, right, left, right, and then I do my center at the top. And we usually do it based on material. So, for example, all of this bottom row are all the same. These are all the same material. Like, even though we have, a, like, an open gap like this, it doesn't matter too much. As long as it's, like, self-explanatory or organized, that's the main thing. What's this one, actually? <laughs> no, nah, I'm not going to do that. I was going to... Because this is the bottom, this is the top. I'd rather keep them as two separate items. So, because also keep this in mind, like we do modify our assets after they've finished, like a lot. So if we do add like extra panel details and stuff, we now still have heaps of resolution to use for free. So that is a benefit of not having to fill our items is we do have extra resolution to play with. It's more about keeping it organized, which is the most important part. Yeah, so let's pretend we, um, yeah, so if we have these ones, I'm just going to quickly just put this here. This one's not, this isn't finished, but this is kind of an example of what we do. So say, for example, we have our, these sorts of materials, right? We would put them on a separate UDEM or separate row to the other materials. So the way we would do it would be like this. What is that actually? Okay. Let's do this as an example. So these scales aren't consistent yet. But we'll just leave them how they are for now as like an example. Time for a break? Soon. That's alright. We're, we're in a... We're deep in discussion. Alright, so firstly, 
Don't go past 10 Udems. This is your max. And you can go you can't go past 10, but you can go as high as you want. So we're gonna do this as an example. So say for example we have our paneling. Uh, let's pretend we've finished our asset. And then we've put it onto the other side. So when you flip it like that and then freeze it, it'll invert. And then what you do is you grab all those UVs, grab them all, and just go up once. That's all you need to do. So now you have uh, this. Where's the other panels? Oh, in engine panels. So this is what you have. So I haven't been reading chat for a bit. So this is the way you do it. You go left, right, left, right. So the reason for that is right. I'll show you. Let's uh, let's get rid of these two. Oh, I have namespace on for some reason. Uh, go away, namespaces. We should also save it, by the way. That that might be a good idea. Yep, I'll show you I'll show you why we do this. So we have where's my engine we we'll use the engine thruster as well. Well the engine thruster is kinda heavy. So we can Actually no, we'll just do the mech. Alright. Let's pretend Let's pretend we can see Maya first. Where's my spaceship? Alright, let's pretend this is my entire spaceship, even though it's obviously not. So we we have it based on we have it based on the rows based on material. So for example, all the mech stuff is in its own row, which is this. Yeah, so don't use this for layout. This is just my general idea. Like ignore there's all this empty space. So what happens, right? is once we we finish our asset we delete not delete we duplicate we go negative one here we freeze it and then now what we do is grab all those udems so we're just selecting everything on one side and we just go up once and then let Maya do its thing okay. so this is what your UVs will look like This is what this is how you want to have your UVs. So what it means is like the texture artist knows that literally every single thing is a copy of what's below it or above it. And it's all based on materials as well. So we have our panels together, we have our mech together. And the key the key for this, right, is say for example, because this happens a lot all the time, we'll finish an asset. And then it'll change, like it'll get redesigned, not redesigned, but like they'll add detail and stuff. If we if we know, if we organized ourselves like well at the start, and we modify one side, we know we can just simply delete the other side. We can do the modification we need to, duplicate it, you know, repeat the process, freeze, and then go up one. And all of our textures that weren't altered by the change will just line up immediately. So this is why you do it this way. Because it means you can instantly just grab one whole side of the mesh, go up once, and all your, your, all your UVs and textures will line up again. So this is, this is why I do it this way. Like everyone has their own UVing methods. So yeah, this is why I always organize myself like this, because every time, like this happens all the time, like I'm not kidding, like we'll finish our asset, and then like a month later, they need some refinement in one area. Then you can simply just delete half the vehicle, make the change, flip it across, go up once, and then you, you're you confident that everything is just going to line up again. You don't have to worry about, oh, does the texture line up to the UV anymore? 
Not if you're doing idioms, you can fit them into how many you want. What are you talking about? Don't you flip the UVs? Uh, we don't. I don't know if that's going to be... Like, I assume games kind of read UDIMs, but we do. So yeah, I leave. I just leave them like this. This is fine for us. I'm not a texture artist, so I can't comment on why that's good or bad. But they always just tell me to do that. They always tell me just to leave it like this. But, um, yeah, I'm going to refill my water. I'll be back in two secs. You guys can admire the, the glorious UVs. Honestly, this is one thing I do enjoy about doing UVs. You can keep it nice and clean and organized. All right, I'll be back in a sec. Oh shit. Maximal, thanks for the prime. I didn't I didn't notice, sorry. <laughs> we um we don't have notifications on for the stream. So I uh I didn't see the prime, but thank you very much, I appreciate it. Um Arendal, D Man and Actor, thanks for the follows. Arturius. Um Yeah, thanks everyone for the follows. The wings of the Milano and Guardians moved a lot. Do you meet up with the rigging department beforehand? How does it work? Excuse me. Well, I didn't. I didn't. No, I did. I did work on the Milano, but I didn't build the Milano, so I wouldn't really claim that. But yeah, I'll, with all the other ships, we talked to them a decent amount. But it's not like we spoke to them before. Like, if we know, like, usually as a modeler, we can kind of tell how things are going to move, so we can usually build it in a way. But always, we give them a first pass model. And then they'll make requests like, oh, can you group it this way or can you name it this way? Usually it's more like hierarchy based stuff instead of like modeling, though. Because, you know, if you're, I mean, usually I can make something that looks like it moves. <laughs> like, that's what I mean. So usually rigging can make do with whatever I do. It's usually just hierarchy stuff they might want to change. But yeah, so all the, uh, all the paneling is done. It's kind of cool. Well, the main panel, at least. So I'll show you 
what we do with the center group there. Oh, that one's not finished. Do you do your hard surface in Maya or do you use other software such as ZBrush? Um, I usually do all my stuff in Maya. Maya usually gets... Well, like, Maya is the standard we do all our work. Like, maybe you can do some, like, breakup stuff in ZBrush, but Maya will get you most of the way. Yeah, automatic uh, unwrapping is definitely much better these days. Uh, orange shells. Is mirrored UVs a problem when you're tiling textures, I mean for distance? But what do you mean? They're not on top of, they're not on the same UDEM though. So they'll have different layout. Oh, Ludo, how's it going, man? I, your script, your name is black, so I have to, I had to select your thing to see it. Yeah, thanks, I appreciate it, man. Wait, did you change the name of your channel? Yeah, thanks for the fine, I appreciate it. God, those those emotes. Yeah, Ludo is the um the head of CG at Dino. So definitely uh definitely go check him out. Yeah, we're doing alright. Oops. UVs. Yeah, after after I got partner, I just we toned down the streaming a bit. But um yeah, Autodesk wanna do these streams, so uh yeah. Can you play cube? What is Oh <laughs> no. <laughs> no, nah, we can't. Sorry. We um so since the stream is obviously sponsored by Autodesk, we have to own the rights to everything we have on the stream. So we can't, we can't play Dono, unfortunately. Don't worry, we, we, all that stuff can come back later. Yeah, usually when it comes to like things like center, usually I just put the center stuff by itself. And usually you, you just put it at the top. Like also another thing that people, I don't know if people really know about this, but you can have gaps. Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter if say for example, your, your UVs go up to here, you can have a gap. It's fine. Someone had a question? Yeah, so I haven't been reading chat <laughs> the best. Have you worked with anyone transitioning from Blender? No. Most most people I know in the industry like have come from like Modo or just started in Maya. But I mean like it's just another 3D package. You just need to spend the time to uh, like if you can model in one package you can model in all of them really you just need to spend the time to learn 
the new um like hotkeys and layout and stuff like that. But yeah, I don't know anyone that's come from Blender. In the industry that I mean. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that have, just I haven't met any of them. Yeah, so to add on to what we had before, I would just do something like this. We put all the center stuff, like up here or something. So usually this is kind of the way I work. Like I would put... I would just keep the center stuff, like, pretty far away. Leave it up here. And then when I finished, and I know how high my UVs go, I'll just bring the center stuff down to, to match it. How do you move the UVs? With the arrow keys. So up here you can see this thing here, right? So your arrow keys will represent whatever this value is. So say for example we change this to like 0.5. Now everything will move half a udem. So whatever your value is here. It's, it's very handy, especially, like, that's why it's so good, like, when you swap left to right, you can just grab all the UDIMs, press up on the arrow key, and you're done. Like, that's all you need to do. It's very convenient. It's interesting seeing this UV workflow. Seems to be good for a team and production basis, but I don't see it for, I don't, I don't see it. I see it done very different usually in games. Yeah, so, obviously, game and film is... Yo, distorted kick. Thanks for the uh, the three months. I appreciate it. Sorry, I don't have notifications on, so I can't see it. But um, yeah. So this is not a game workflow at all. Like it's it's for us in film. The main key is that we want to be able to update the model and preserve the UVs as easily as we can for the texture artist, because it happens with every asset. We update the model after it's been textured. So this way. If you UV your if you do your UVs this way, it's very easy to keep it aligned. Yeah, for us it's more about like long term organization and making people's lives down the pipeline easier than making sure every single UDM is packed. You learn so much from my streams. Awesome, I'm glad you did. UV, these UVs are totally different for games? Yeah, for sure. Like, I've been looking into game workflows recently. And it seems so tedious. <laughs> it seems so tedious to me. I'm like, oh, like no UDIMs and stuff like that. Like, oh, that sounds painful. That's fine. They, they have their own methods. They have to deal with limitations, yeah, for sure. In film, we don't. At the end of the day, everything we have will be a 2D image in the end anyway. Oh, excuse me. Zero care for maintenance and team pipeline. I mean, to be fair, I know I know a lot of modelers don't go to this effort. But there's there's a reason why a lot of my friends are texture artists. <laughs> It's because I always make sure the texture artists have a good time with their UVs. Because you you don't want to make their life difficult. It would frustrate me so much if I was a tech if I had to start the foundation of my work based on someone else's poor job. So that's why I always try and make sure the, the texture artists have good UVs. Because that would just drive me nuts. Alright, so now we know these are all kind of UV. Actually, I'll do that one. Since we know all these ones are UV'd, I might just um, go back to the other shader. So to do this, it's kind of easy. We just need to go here to the hyper shade. We can just uh, select our UVs, select object or material. And I notice I only replaced the uh, the red paint ones, so I can just simply right click and assign material to selection. And now we're back. But we know all this stuff has the same correct texture resolution. Actually, no, I changed this one. Um, paint back.
You could outsource the UVing to me? Yeah, no chance. I mean, you could. I would just charge you a lot of money to do it. Oh, why is this so bad? Okay, here's here's a prime example. <laughs> here's a prime example of why we, we organize our UVs that way. Because I didn't realize there was this gap. So we're going to have to bring this down. <laughs> Bring it down into here. Not that far. So obviously our, our UVs are all broken now. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to update the UVs. So fortunately we know we can easily replace this one and it'll be fine. It's even better actually, because what we can do is in theory All right, that's good. So we can do this actually. I'm gonna unfold. No, let's go horizontal first, and then up. But say, for example, we've altered this one piece now, right? We can. Oh. We can, you know, fix this one, move it wherever we want, like there. But we also have to replace the the bottom one. So now what we can do is we know we have this here, which is the middle. So we can simply just snap this to here, duplicate it down, and freeze it, and then just simply grab everything here and move to the right once, and it's going to line up with the, the UVs we altered of the other piece. Oh. Where's the other one? This one? No, that's the bigger one. This one. Cool. So we know these will line up together now. And then same thing, you can just grab all this and flip to the other side again. Um, UV smoothing methods? Uh, I don't know. I'm not, I don't do that. The, the texture artist is the one that does that. So I don't know the settings that the texture artists use. Can you, f you hope one day you can call UVing therapeutic? I find it therapeutic. Super relaxing. I, I enjoy the, um, What's it called? I enjoy like the laying outside, like being efficient and organized. Yo, how's it going? So yeah, now we know if we flipped all of this to the other side, everything will line up again. And everyone is happy. The texture artist doesn't have to retexture everything. What's my saving method? Um, I just save on the same file, and then, I don't know, every few hours, I might do an incremental save. This is, that's just usually what I do. Yo, MC Albedo. Thanks for the follow. Uh, Creo, thanks for the follow. So, Oimoid? Thanks for the follow. <laughs> Butchering people's names. Yeah, if you're if you're finding these streams uh, educational or enjoyable, definitely appreciate you know all the follows, all the subs, or all the supports. So uh, thanks everyone for being here. It's uh, it's pretty cool. This uh, this is a nice little quick condensed ten streams. We're still going. I'm not finishing, but uh, I want to thank everyone. Do you employ any form of version control? Um, depends. If I'm doing do you mean like, like, like this is the thing, right? When you check an asset into the pipeline, it's there for good. That version of the asset is in the pipeline for good. So even if I brought it back in and I made changes, the original will always be there. 
So I don't have to worry about that sort of stuff. Yo, how's it going? We don't have that much work. We have heaps of work. So we're going to try and do... I mean, this is the fifth stream out of ten. I think we're in a pretty solid state for... um. How many streams have we done? We've done four full streams. The so 12. So in almost 15 hours, we kind of are in a pretty good spot. Like, all, a lot of the red stuff is UV'd. But, I mean, it's not finished. We still need to add lots of other stuff. But um, you'll see what I mean. We're just going to keep going until we run out of time, pretty much. We, last stream, we kitbashed this interior. <laughs> based on just, um, it's just kitbash parts. But maybe that could be a good thing to get out of the way. What does the Unitize tool do in the UV editor? So Unitize takes any face. No, it takes all the polygons and makes them a full UDEM each. That's what Unitize does. So what I'm doing now is a pretty important step that a lot of people, a lot of modelers don't do this and it drives people nuts. Is like, say for example, we did kitbash all this stuff. Like, go through and delete what you don't see. Like, seriously. Because this is all extra polygons and extra texture space. Or UDIM space that other people now have to deal with. And they obviously don't like dealing with it. So, it doesn't take long just to go through and delete what you won't see. But yeah, a lot of texture... A lot of modelers overlook that. And texture artists get sad. <laughs> Trust me, I know. They get sad. Because they tell me. <laughs> yeah, we still got a... We have one more hour left. I'm going to take a quick uh, propane tanks in the cockpit. Who says they're propane? They could just be something else. But, um... Yeah, I'm just going to reach for my water. I'll be back in a sec. Deleting unused elements as a lighting artist? That sucks, man. It shouldn't it shouldn't get to the stage that you have to delete unused elements. <laughs> Things should be done efficiently to begin with. That's G fuel in the cockpit, of course. How you get the proportions right? Uh what do you mean? You mean for the vehicle itself? I mean, I had a concept mesh that we started with, and we had a concept art anyway. So let's...
Yeah, maybe we can wrap the cockpit up today. Just because so, we don't really see the cockpit that much, it's not that important. We know we don't need... How much to delete this stuff? Like, for me, it doesn't bother me how, like, perfect this model of the cockpit is, just because it's more just to catch, like, highlights. So if everything doesn't line up super flush, it doesn't bother me too much. Just because we know it's not going to be seen. It's completely different if, it's, if it is going to be seen, of course. Yo, Craze Rabbit, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the uh, stream. I might just leave that one there. At this point, the cockpit is more kind of just like a light blocking thing at this point. Alright, let's close this. Your artists drink a lot. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if they drink necessarily more than more than any other industry, but I mean, sure, especially in London, they all enjoy going to the pub. But I mean, everyone in London goes to the pub, so it's. I don't think there's necessarily anything particular different about artists. Maybe, if, I mean, we do have a lot of. It depends. Like sometimes we can have a lot of crunch, so they might drink a lot in that way. But I, I don't know, I don't necessarily think VFX industry is full of alcoholics or something, like, any different than any other industry. But yeah, as far as the cockpit goes, I'm just being pretty rough with it. It doesn't... The cockpit is really basic, like, you... I mean, it obviously depends on the context, but because we don't intend to really see the cockpit that much, we're keeping it pretty basic and relaxed. And we're also obviously building only one half of it first. <laughs> Spelled cocaine wrong. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, so this will probably do for us. Good enough. So what I might do is I might just UV one side of it and then just flip it. 
Yeah, what about QVs? It's pretty good. My uh, UV editor has definitely come a long way. Yeah, it's definitely good enough for us. Yeah. So what you can do is you can just do one side and then flip it. And then sew the other side on if you want. Or to be fair, like this is this stuff's kind of not too crazy. We probably could have just done it um uh, flip. We probably could have just automatic unwrapped the whole thing at once. This thing's just kind of like a shell to hold on to the uh, the rest of the cockpit, really. So yeah, definitely spend your effort where um, what's you know wherever is going to be most important. Uh, use. I'm just going to move and sew this stuff. Cool. And then... There we go. There we have our little... Nice little cockpit. Is it Maya 2020? Yeah, this is Maya 2020. Artists drink the necessary amount. <laughs> oh god. Uh cockpit interior. So a lot of this stuff is already pre UV'd because I kibashed it. So I'm just I don't really care too much about this sort of stuff, so I'm just gonna use this thing to get the scale accurate. But I'm still gonna keep them based on where what they are. So set and pack. This is my chair. <laughs> I just simply took one of my other pieces and it's now a chair. Here's one, same thing. Set, pack. So the bottom is a new piece now, technically. Pull that off. Um, oh. Alright. Maybe it's automatic forever. See what we get. I didn't realize it was so angled, fair enough. Okay. Didn't know until I guess. <laughs> I got no idea. Nutella does taste pretty good though. Um, what's this? Oh, this is my chair. Chair. Just a cube, pretty much. Just automatic. This one I latticed a bit, so I might just unfold. The the circle's a bit squashed. Actually, maybe we can just quickly unsquash that. Alright, now everything's happy now. Um, I might unfold this. Just to kind of line, make it a bit better. Yeah, that's probably good enough. Yeah, now we have all our... All our Cockpit interior stuff ready to go. So I might put these two together. So this one. I might just auto pack those two. It's pretty much 
a big console anyway. Yeah, it's fine. And then what do we have here? I usually group things based on what they are and where they are. So where are the two tanks? These are at the back. So I do auto pack, but then I might like do manual like the actual layout itself. If it's slightly big like that, it doesn't matter. We can just scale it down a little bit. Like it's not worth having a new Udem for something that's so such a small change. Where's this? Okay. This is technically one chair. And then we can just put this here. That chair is not going to fit at all, is it? Honestly, I might just do this. Just scale the chair slightly. Since, you know, this is just an interior thing, it won't matter too much. It's probably better just to do that. Cool, so that's it. The interior is done. So uh, I'm just going to put this up here, out of the way. Um, in a minute, black. Fun fact that could... Oh. <laughs> Why is the chat turned into a Nutella chat? But yeah, we have uh, 45 more minutes left of the uh, stream. Just a heads up. But so far, we're in a pretty pretty good spot. So we're kind of doing this asset with the mindset of, run of the fact that we will run out of time eventually. So we're kind of getting the foundation done first. Like we want like, you know, a base model, we want base UVs, base hierarchy. So even if you do run out of time, Oh, excuse me. Even if you do run out of time, you at least have something. You have you have an asset, which is better than having a half finished, well done thing. Um, oh, an engine mech. Crepes with Nutella. Yeah, hell yeah. Of all the stuff you wrote, the first you see is the stuff of Nutella. Sorry, man. The ch the chat is like flooding. <laughs> the chat is going super fast. You decide to retake the term in grad in December? That's fair enough. If you feel you need the more time. Um. Yeah, when it comes to like things like schooling and stuff, I don't think like... Like, a lot of people just assume you kind of finish schooling, pop out, and someone gives you a job. But a lot of the time, people will have to continue working on their folios after they finish. So I, I don't think the... F what, I don't think, like, schooling is super important, to be honest. Like, a lot of people just assume you just get a job. But it doesn't, doesn't really work that way. It's not... <laughs> Yeah, at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is your portfolio. Just get a house. Yeah, exactly. Why go into debt for school when you can just own a house? Uh, let's see. Should we do any more UVs or should we do some modeling? We've only got 45. We've only got like 40 minutes left. Maybe we should just keep doing some UVing. Like, things we know aren't going to change like this, we can probably just do. Ugh. Alright, that wasn't that good. Sometimes I'll do, like, camera-based. Camera-based can be quite good.
Actually, that is accurate. I didn't realize it looked like that. <laughs> yeah, it's actually better. After you finished school, you worked in your folio for a year, and now none of your schoolwork is in your demo reel. Yeah, you go, you go to schools to like learn, or hopefully learn, from good instructors, and uh, be surrounded by your peers, which will help you know push you. I think that's the main benefit of school, just being in an environment where you're surrounded by competition, because that's the reality of work and I feel that's the main benefit you get out of it uh, do I want to do the unitized method maybe we can let's do unitized method uh, modify where's unitized There's. ouch what happened Yeah, that school's not cheap. You you better get your money's worth. Yeah, that worked kind of well. We just use the unitized UV method instead. So we have nice straight uh, UVs like that. And that's US prices as well. So what's this? This we can probably order pack pretty pretty easily. Is that it? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, unitized UV is like perfect for this sort of stuff. Yeah, when you have a ring like this, this is when unitized is pretty good. Actually, I don't know how it's going to do because it's on an angle, but we'll see. I might eat my words, it might not work that well. No, I did the wrong way. This way. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot. Yeah, because it's curved, it's not going to do exactly what I wanted. But, it's still not bad. It's not terrible, it could be worse. Yeah, because it's on that weird angle. What happens if we straighten it? What are you guys talking about? All schools are different, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's okay. I'm usually never, I'm never usually a fan of the slanted tiles like that, but it might be nice for the texture artist. So we'll just leave it. A lot of times if I need to add detail, usually I add it on top instead of um, cutting into it. Because it's usually the easiest, fastest way of adding refinement. So if, even if I do add detail on top of this, I'll probably just add it on top instead of cutting into it. That means we can just UV this stuff now. That's right, I'm covering my tools.
Uh, what am I doing? Oh, it's here. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of schools are like that. Where they're more concerned about making money than actually teaching you realities of the industry, which is not good. Obviously, we won't talk about specifics, but uh, yeah. It can be hard to, um, to recommend people which schools to go to. It's quite nicely. Actually, let's, let's keep it consistent. It's better to have your UVs consistent. So let's keep it all just running the same direction. It's much better to do this. A lot of people have said they come to my stream and learn way more on my stream than they do at school. Which is kind of shocking. But it kind of it doesn't surprise me to an extent. Um, let's see. We don't need this middle bit, we can get rid of that. Yeah, international student prices are crazy. I remember, like, you know how I was saying, like, I'm self-taught. There was a point of time where I, I was considering going to one of these, these big schools. And there was just no way I'd be able to afford it. So I was considering, like doing like high pay low skill jobs to save the money to go to these schools and then i was just like might as well just self-teach myself that's one of the main reasons why i didn't go to any of these fancy schools is i just didn't just didn't have the money to do it it's not cheap but um yeah we i did the self-taught route and we ended up okay so uh that's good but that also comes down with the type of person you are as well. Like if you do go the self-taught route, like you need crazy drive. You need to keep yourself disciplined. You need to make sure you're constantly working. The main thing I regret doing, sorry, the main thing I regret not doing actually, is I was never part of any online communities when I was learning. And I, well, I think things have definitely changed a lot since I was learning, but um. That's a very important thing, I feel, being part of online communities. So the fact that you all came into this stream is already much better than I was doing. I was doing nothing. Well, I was just guessing at home. That's literally all I was doing. Just guessing. But yeah, by coming to the stream, you, uh, you get to learn from someone that actually works in the industry. Um, thing with schools, you're limited with time and pressure. I think that's good though. I think you need to be limited. If you don't have, if you don't have those time limits, like, what's the um, what's the thing? I can't remember what it's called, but your work always gets done when it's needed. If that makes sense. Like, say for example, you have ten days, you're gonna stretch that task out for ten days, but you're expected to do it in three days. You'll get it done in three days. Like, that's what I mean. Like, that's why the Macross just never got finished. Because we, we had no end date. And then, yeah, the Macross just never got done. So I think deadlines is good. You need deadlines. Because we, well, we have deadlines at work. Yo, I, uh, I need your restroom. I'll be back in two secs. But we have 30 minutes left. Just a, a heads up.
you think you would have lost motivation without school? I think, but what you can replace the school motivation with is like motivation with like people online, like online communities I think is good. Like I used to do like, um, I used to do a lot of the R station challenges to kind of keep me in check. But then they became too stressful with my full-time job. So uh, well, they kind of fell aside of it. Yeah, as as Lou, thanks for the follow. Yeah, needing it definitely helps having someone like cracking that whip to uh, keep you focused. Oh shit! Cool. Oh, why do we have the numbers? So the numbers is so we can see like um, direction and scale of the UVs. To make sure it's consistent and flowing in the right direction. That's what the numbers are for. So here we can see the UVs are squashed. And squashed UVs aren't good. Okay, and it's facing the wrong direction. So that's why we do this. How has everyone been enjoying the UV stream? I know people don't like UVs. <laughs> but uh, it's important. Whoa. But it's important. It's like knowing how to good do you good UVs is very important, I feel. Even if you're a modeler. Because, yeah, like I said, if you, if you give the texture artists good UVs, they'll remember you. If you give them bad UVs, they'll also remember you. Like, you know, working in the film industry is a massive team effort. Like, you want, you want people to want to work with you. That's going the wrong way. And giving them bad work doesn't help you. <laughs> That's why I always go and ask them what they want as well. Oh yeah, so when I did this, you'll notice I already UV'd one of them before I duplicate it. Because it just makes it much easier just to do the UVs later, instead of having to... Whoa. <laughs> the whole, the whole Udem is just this thing. Not particularly fond of how it packed, but whatever, it's fine. If the scale is slightly different, it's not end of the world either. Like, this is just better to do. Horrible UVs could result in you getting fired? Uh, I wouldn't go that far. But, um... Yeah, people just might not want to work with you anymore. And you don't want to be in that position. Would it be worth to quit your school if you got a job opportunity? Uh, it depends what the job is, but probably. Like... You, like, when you, okay, yeah, for, so firstly, it depends what the job is. Like, if, say, for example, you're in school, and, I don't know, like, Dineg or someone was like, yeah, we'll hire you. Like, go. Like, don't even think about it. Just let, go to Dineg. But, um, if it's, like, a small studio, maybe not. Depends. Depends what type of studio it is. If it's some small, random indie studio that's never released a product, maybe not. Because you won't, you might not necessarily learn good practices. Yo, how's it going? Oh, 
What's this? Oh. Yeah, we have twenty. So we have twenty-five minutes left for the uh, this stream. I'm a gun on my. How long have I been using the program for? Um, I don't know. Adam. I'm not that good. I'm just comfortable. I definitely feel much more comfortable in Maya than other programs. But that's just because we. This is what we use at work. Um, I've been using Maya. Since 2012, eight years. But you know, like this is the main program we use at work. So I, I spend a lot of time in this program. So do you make organic stuff? I personally don't. I need to though. I need to practice. Because yeah, most of almost everything I do is hard surface. Oh, this one. I have need to finish this. Yeah, almost everything I do is hard surface pretty much. Usually that's what I'm always hired for, so that's why I get gift. Oh, this shouldn't be in Mac. This should be in detail. I think? No. What's this? Body. I must be good at weapons. I guess. I very rarely make weapons though. I usually like things like props and stuff. I we don't usually get that sort of work. Yeah, I, I like doing automatic UVs just to see what we get. Because if you do, if if the mesh is pretty simple, a lot of the time you can get a pretty good result. And then I might just go ahead and like, you know, sew things up. What did I do here? Oh, interesting. Okay, no, that's fine. Top is okay. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully that, hopefully my uh, UV methods help you with your uh, your current work. Yeah, organization will save you a lot of time. Is there a lot of general props and stuff in VFX? There is, but depending on your studio, you might not do it. Like, because that sort of stuff is usually props and stuff these days are usually um, scanned because they make them on set. That means they're much easier to outsource. Which is one of the reasons why I don't usually make props. Maybe we should actually see which way these UVs are running. Yeah. Alright, so that's another benefit of having the, the checker. You can see if the UVs are actually stretching or not. Oops.
Okay, I was wondering why that was backwards. Alright, that makes sense then. Um, as a junior, would it make sense for you to put some props in your reel, like two or three big ones at turntable full props with wireframe? I mean, I think it's better to have like a prop that's done very, very well over like a spaceship that doesn't, that looks very average. I think a laptop is way too simple. Like I think that like, the Akira bike you did, like something like that, but to a super high level is much better, I feel. Like a small vehicle, I think, like a small vehicle done very well is better. Like I think something like a laptop or like headphones is just too, it's too simple. Black Hawk. <laughs> oh, the, the clip is gone, Chernobyl. <laughs> we had to, we had to get rid of all the clips. Because of the DMCA thing. I know that. <laughs> the black rock clip is gone. You literally have two pistols in your reel. Are they useless? I I don't know why you'd have two pistols. Like one done very high res. Maybe. If it's displayed really nicely. And it's stuff like that. I don't know why you'd need two pistols. Unless you mean two pistols next to each other. That's different. It depends on the quality of the asset, for sure. The Black Hawk is lost for good now. No one will know the, uh, the truth of the Black Hawk. Oh, my Maya is kind of bugged a bit. Um, element body. Okay, Nyano Cat, thanks for follow. And Beats, oh my god, EXE, thanks for follow everyone. Welcome to the stream. So, yeah, we've got like 18 minutes left if anyone has any, like, you know, last minute questions or anything like that. Yeah, it was so funny. On, um, on Thursday, right? We did a stream. We were trying to decide like if we should like learn or like spend some time in Blender or if we should learn Unreal. And the conclusion we made was we played Fall Guys. <laughs> That's what we did on stream instead. Fall Guys was fun. Maybe we can do some more Fall Guys on stream another time. Oh yeah, so I'm I'm deleting history constantly. I just have it as a hockey. So I, when I delete history now, I don't even think about it. It's kind of just like a default thing I do. But yeah, delete your history. It'll it'll speed up your scene. Yeah, I have it as a custom hockey. I don't really use Maya's uh, history that much. I think it's definitely one aspect that I feel it can be improved. That's probably fine. Um. I think having maybe. F for me personally, I think having like four very well done assets is a strong, is a strong uh, folio. I feel. Mm. 
Of course, it depends what it is. I feel using the. Yeah, I didn't find it reliable either. I, that's why I just simply just don't use it. Oh, that's right. I modified this. Oh, we shouldn't do that there. Dude. Whoa, so long. You need to include a snail in your reel, only if you want to work at the highest studios. Don't put snails in your room. Please don't. Actually, instead of breaking everything, let's just not break everything. Oh, what is this? Why is this one in particular so long? Oh, it should be part of here. Snail is mandatory. No, snail is not mandatory. You can get by without having a snail. Sorry. Depends. If it's a very cool snail, maybe. It would have to be a very cool snail. And not like the snail I did. The snail I did was complete garbage. Like, even the rocket standing on is very sad. This little thing is kind of cool, actually. Like, this might... This itself might make a nice piece later. Wait, is that a hole? Not a hole, okay. Like, this itself is kind of nice. I might save that out separately. But yeah, we have a uh, we have ten minutes left. If anyone has any like last minute questions, yo, <laughs> how's it going, Volpsy? It's such a cute snail. Maybe it's a <laughs> it's a very sad snail. Let's see what the UVs look like so far. Well, this is actually looking kind of decent. But yeah, we have a uh, we have ten minutes left. If there's any any last minute questions, yeah, don't forget we um we do part part six will be on Wednesday night, so we we alternate between weekend and uh, weeknight. 
Just so we hit different viewers. But yeah, look how how glorious the UVs look so far. Quite nice. Yo, Nintendo, thanks for the follow. Will I stream some full guys? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Probably not today. I need to get some food. I don't know, unless people wanted to see Fall Guys, but I doubt it. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure the hundred people that are here came for the UVing, and not the Fall Guys. Most important part of your portfolio is to state whether you are sub to Hodgson. Of course, for sure. If you're a sub of the stream, they know you're legit. Yeah, you hold shit, like Chenable's right, you hold shift while doing the curve, to maintain the curve, I mean. Yeah, so if I miss, if I miss um, messages on the chat, it's because there's a hundred of you here. Damn, I still, I still can't believe we have a hundred people watching me UV, that's kind of funny. Most people hate UV. But yeah, we're still going pretty strong. A lot of this sort of stuff, we can we can fix this sort of stuff really quickly. This is why it's important and helpful to kit bash with pre UV'd stuff, because we just simply need to alter the text intensity and boom, we're done. We have our we have our pipes UV'd. This one we can do quickly with the autom with the unitize. But yeah, this is why I don't mind doing UVs. It's it's pretty chill. Oh yeah, we can just set a text for instance. See how see how quick that was. We we don't have to stress too much about it. Oh, we don't even need half of the stuff. It's like watching a puzzle get assembled? Yeah. That's one of the reasons why I do like doing this sort of stuff. I like the um, like the puzzle solving aspect of like making production meshes. Like I, I do enjoy this sort of stuff. Well, don't do that. Especially with when it comes to things like kit bashing. Because a lot of the uh, the tedious modeling stuff is already kind of done for you. Well, this whole thing is just one Udem. Kind of crazy. And this is also one of the benefit of having the obviously the the UV. The UV on because now we can actually see like what is different scales, what needs to change, stuff like that, very easily. Yeah, I think asking questions on the Discord is probably the best. I mean, how are you going to learn if you don't ask questions, I guess? So we stretch this out, so we need to uh, unwrap this one. 
In one, I usually just do it in one direction. Is it normal to sing in the shower? I mean, if you want to. Glass needs to have thickness. Yes, glass needs to have thickness. So, yeah, when in the film industry, we, we base our objects on the real world. So if glass in the real world has thickness, we add thickness. Because light needs to pass through it correctly, or accurately. Well, this one piece is that... Okay, fair enough. Index of refraction. Depends on what you sing. That's true. Yeah, once again, like, if if it's barely bigger than you, don't just scale it down. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like, this is, this is fine. Yeah. I know I keep repeating myself, but you guys know the drill. Keeping UVs uh, running the same directions, very important. Same scale. Stuff like like this sort of stuff doesn't matter too much because this is all going to be procedurally UV like textured anyway, so it's not too bad. Let's uh, let's check who's online. Some Houdini cloth sims. Jeez, look at. Alright, we still got we still got three minutes left anyway. So if anyone has any like last minute uh last minute questions or anything, feel free to uh oh I need to finish this please. Feel free to uh shout out. Yeah. I might merge these together. You can merge things together if they're like the same material. Um, L main body. So yeah, when it comes to merge, we can, we'll do all this sort of stuff in a bit, like later streams anyway, we'll talk about, you know, things we can merge together to, you know, reduce the object count and stuff like that. But we'll do that later. Do you ever use MASH? I don't use MASH. Oh, this one's going the other way. As environment asks, what should I put in my reel? Should I work on cities, buildings, and stuff like that, or focus more on natural environments? I mean, you can always do a mix of both. You can do like an overrun, like city with with organic stuff, like Last of Us. If you wanted to hit both at the same time, you could do that. But I'm not an environment artist, so I I might not be the best person to answer that. But in my head, that makes sense. Why not just do both? I might just cap that off with a cube. Might be the easiest one. Stop looking at UVs for a sec. Uh, I, 
Arvid might come on. How long is the sec? We can raid Arvid if he wants. But um, he needs to come on in the next few minutes. Because I'm going to bounce. I'm hungry. I need food. And coffee. Oh, Volpsy is live? Oh, she is live. Okay, we could raid Volpsy. Whoever comes first. Because uh, I'm super hungry. Do you guys know Ross Draws? The dude with like 1 million followers on, on YouTube. He started streaming as well now. His stream exploded, like, instantly. I'm not surprised. He's got a million followers. It doesn't surprise me. But he's, uh... He's popping up. Quite a lot. Yo, LMAO Zombie. Thanks for the follow. What amazing dish am I making tonight? I have no idea. I do barely any cooking now. <laughs> these days. Yeah, we've already, we've already been here for over... We've already passed the three-hour deadline. So, uh, I'm just gonna... We can probably just raid Volps here, I guess. She's doing some ZBrush stuff. So you can, um... Well, I assume she's doing ZBrush. Oh, she's doing clay stream today. Alright, we can raid her anyway. DoorDash. Nah, Uber Eats. But, uh, yeah. But yeah, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Don't forget, we'll be doing part 6 on Wednesday night at 8 p.m. PDT. Um, oh. NA. What? That was again. Yeah, I'll be continuing on Friday, no, Wednesday at 8 p.m. PDT. And yeah, this will all be up on YouTube like usual. But uh, thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. I'll, uh, I'll catch you all later.